a video. I'm going to make a video. Pay attention. You definitely want this function. Here's the function you want right here. Why is this a function? Number one. Why is this a function? It's a function because it's going to change your current working directory, which is a property of your currently running shell. And this is bash. If Z shell has functions that, you know, bash, you can just put them in your bash and see you're good to go. Um, write this down. If you want to, I put a link to my dot files. You can go look at my dot files and you can find this. It's in my bash RC. You're going to have to find it though. I'm GitHub. I'm not going to cut and paste the entire code. Obviously. Um, let's, let's break down what the thing is doing though. So you can see. So first of all, it's a function and, um, uh, let's actually look at the bash RC, uh, my bash RC here. Um, I don't have a lot of functions. In fact, in general, I'll make a video about this, but in general, I don't believe in making functions um, unless they're modifying the existing environment. Uh, I'll, I'll use an occasional alias, but rather than use a function or an alias, almost always I will make a command instead. And <laughs> somebody's having fun with me. Um, and commands are, commands are infinitely superior for reasons that I'll talk about in another video, but ultimately... The reason is a standalone executable command, even if it's only one line, can be used anywhere. Anywhere you would do a system exec uh, or an exec of any kind. Not just as a filter command from within BI, but as a pipe to other programs and lots of other reasons. So I will default to commands, even if they're just one line. Uh, the only time I'll ever do a function, this is part of the beginner boost, but the only time I'll do a function is if it's changing the state of the current shell, which is what clone is doing. Uh, or if it's an alias and it's just, I'm just lazy, like schmocks. I don't want to type schmod plus, you know, dash whatever. So those are the only times. But let's actually break down uh, this clone function, starting with this very important part down at the bottom. If you do not export the function, it will not be available to any subshells. And, you know, if you're doing exec bash dash L or anything like that, and you are regularly switching back and forth between, you know, functions and subfunctions, or you write a script and you want to call clone from your script, can't do it unless you export the function because it will be available to sub sub processes. So make sure you have that and then export down there. That just says um, if the beginning was true, in other words, if it was able to, you know, run clone and define that function at, in runtime, which is when the bash RC runs, then go ahead and export the function. All right. Um, up here, we have the regular processing of, of variables. Uh, because this is bash, we have local up here, which defines these uh, these things, this, these operations to be, these assignments to be local to the function block. Um, and if you've used other shells, you know that this is not a shell thing. This is a bash thing. Um, um, so that's what that's doing. Um, you would not use declare there. You can use declare there for other things. The local and declare are largely the same, but go read about it in the bash RC man page if you want. So this says make the repo and put the first argument to the clone function to, into it. Um, and it also says to define a variable called user. Uh, that's just, just declaring a variable called user for use within the function. Um, you can actually just separate those with spaces. That's all that's doing. Uh, here we have local repo equals blah. Uh, this actually replaces repo with the, with a copy of itself. <laughs> um, and the copy of itself, this is a re find and replace kind of thing. This, uh, puts this, uh, URL at to the beginning. It adds that to the beginning of the repo. Um, and then, uh, we have this one. Um, what is this one doing? Oh, this one is stripping off. Uh, so this this allows you to call clone. So let's say you accidentally cut and paste. Uh, of course, this only works with GitHub. But if you accidentally cut and paste a URL that has HTTPS, it'll get rid of it. It'll uh, it'll get rid of the git at github.com. And that's because we're going to assume it's GitHub and we're going to build up uh, the way to clone it uh, down below um, using just the these, these commands down here. So let's get down there. So then we do if equals by the way if you're using bash always 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 i'm going to say it again always 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 use double brackets in bash they are safer they they 
turn they deactivate expansion if you are using single brackets in your bash code you're doing it wrong fight me um all right so here here you go double brackets and this says uh, if repo contains blah, you're like, why are there quotes around it? Because it's double brackets and you can't even use it that uh, around it, right? Um, and then it says, okay, so it says, hey, if I have a slash at the beginning, then just get rid of the slash. That's what this is. This is get rid of the slash. That's all it is. Um, and uh, <laughs> never use double brackets. Don't test me. All right, else user equals get user. Um, if you happen to have an environment variable set for get user, it'll use that instead. Otherwise, if the, the user um, doesn't have anything at that point, let's go ahead and, and see. Let's give it the user environment variable. So this is assuming you have the same identity as your GitHub. And, and if, by the way, <laughs> if you're like working on a system, a VM or whatever, and you your, your active user is not the same as your GitHub user, um, you know, sucks to be you. Uh, I would, I mean, you can definitely modify this to your, to what you like, but I, I always make sure that the account I'm using is the same as my GitHub account. Um, you don't have to do that obviously, but if you did great, uh, down here, we actually grab the name of the repo. Uh, we're grabbing the user, uh, <laughs> people are having fun with me on the stickers today. Uh, user D we can have that. Uh, this is building up the user directory. So this is assuming that you're following the same syntax that I am or the same system that I am. So for example, um, like it or hate it, I always put my repos in uppercase repos because I don't know, because people, that's what they do. Um, you can use lowercase, whatever you want. I always put all my GitHub stuff. Uh, I can have github.com, gitlab.com, source.hut, whatever. And I always follow an organization that follows the domain organization so that when two repos uh, collide uh, that have the same username um, and, you know, you can put those in here. Uh, I, I have, un this is a lesson I learned very much the hard way by just putting everything in this like universal repos directory and then obviously having naming collisions. So avoid that, avoid that by using fully qualified uh, directory structures that match the domain, you know, internet system, and you'll never have a problem with conflict. So if you have artifacts, Rob slash dot files, and you have like Joe Schmo slash dot files, you know, you're not going to smash into each other. In fact, um, I still have stuff from GitLab that I have not ported over to GitHub. Uh, and those repos are identically named, even though they have different content. And I have a GitLab.com and a GitHub.com. And all that stuff is available in the environment variable uh, repos, which is defined earlier. Um, and that's what that's about. So that says, hey, I'm going to go get GitHub. So this clone, obviously, you could get fancier with it. But this particular clone function assumes that I want to clone something from GitHub. And then we have right here. By the way, it doesn't have to be me. But if I don't provide a name, uh, it will assume that I want to clone my own thing, which is super cool. Um, when you're getting on a new system and you just want to clone your stuff and you don't want to do all the stuff it would take to do GH repo clone, blah, 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 and build up your own structure, directory structure and everything. So that's what this is about. So we have path here. We got the user D, uh, and the name that builds the full tire path to the fling. Now this is why it's a function right here. So this says if the directory exists, that's what this is about. Then, uh, go into it, CD into it. Uh, and we're done. Right. So this is really cool because this says if I already cloned it, just CD into it. Right. So if I don't know if I cloned it or not, I can use the same clone command and it'll just go into it. Say, oh, dummy, you already cloned it. Right. And it returns from the function. Um, otherwise, it continues and it says, OK, I'm going to go ahead and make this directory uh, using uh, recursive parental. As it says, the dash P is a Unix uh, I'm sorry, is a Linux only thing. This is not POSIX compliant. You can't do make directory dash P on uh, I think you can on Z shell because they added it. I think K shell added it, but it is not POSIX. Strictly speaking, make directory dash P is not POSIX. So you'd have to do something else there. But because I'm always using a shell that supports make directory dash P, uh, I'm okay. And that says, go ahead and make the whole thing, including any sub parent directories, which are not created and then CD into that. Uh, and then go ahead and echo the GitHub command to the shell. So I can see what it's doing. And then do it. So that that'll actually print out the command to the shell. And then we're gonna get we're gonna get repo clone. 
uh, that one, and we're going to recurse submodules so that if there's any submodules inside of the Git repo, those will also be subcloned. And then it CDs into the new thing that just got cloned, which is just one directory down, and we're good to go. So all of that gives me this kind of functionality. So we can go out to a random, uh, let's go out to a random GitHub repo of anybody's. Um, and my Zets already there. Let's see if we can find, I don't know, we want to, let's do Kubernetes. What's one that I've been using lately that I was looking at? Um, I mean, there's some, oh, I know. Let's do ASCII doc. Yeah, because that's actually one we were just doing. Let's try ASCII doc. Okay, so then I do clone ASCII doc. So I'm not in, I'm like completely in a different place. GitHub, RDX, Rob, right? So clone ASCII doctor, doctor, right? So let me hit enter. And I already had it cloned. It looks like I already had it cloned. So let's delete. Let's delete it. Yeah, I can delete it. All right, let's try again. Uh, clone ASCII doctor. All right, so it's going to go in there. Recurse submodule. Boom, there it is. And it CD'd me right into it. Right? How cool is that? Um, I don't think I have my CV cloned, so I'm going to clone my own CV directory. There it is. And now I'm in my CV directory. Really cool, right? And if I go into here, I clone it, and I go back into there, it just CDs into the link because I already have it. There you go. That's it. You're welcome. It's in my dot files. Go check it out. See you later. Beginner Boost, May the 4th.